There you go that was ultra feminist i'm kuya p it's nerds world the world show pal show so of course it's your dobro the babinka boy the leader of the holla holla homies in the center gang gang back for another one and as you see on the screen i have the ultra feminist herself giovanni espiritu and i hope i said that right i don't want really to mess it up hi giovanni okay, hi thank you so much for having me on the show pal show i'm excited to be here um thank you yeah and thank you to ashley shout out you know yes. for the intro shout out to tremendous ashley rapuano love you girl thank you as always she is key to this uh connection so we love you ashley and i'm so thankful because after doing my research Girl, you are amazing. Just everything you've Thank done, uh, you. both acting and behind the camera and for the culture. Let's Thank go. You. Let's go. So honored. This is why I wanted to do Show Pal Show is to meet amazing folks like yourself. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. So I am here to talk about whatever you want to know. Ask me any questions. I'm pretty much an open book about anything and everything. Awesome. Well, okay, then let's get to it. I am some people call the Filipino Oprah. Or Barbara Walters, you know, because sometimes Oprah can be problematic and so can Barbara Walters. So without the hat, I usually wear a hat, but I was like, I'm sweating down right now and it's cold right now too, which is crazy. But um, 
it's just been a crazy day in just okay. life and politics. So it's just like, oh yeah, you know, we are everybody. Give right yourself now. some time to grieve before we like restore, and then we do the work. But we, yeah, like we need to take our time to regroup and grieve, and then get the f out there to continue to fight for people. Definitely feel you. So um, I like to kick it off, Giovanni, by yeah. showing love to our answers, our ancestors, our people before seeing if some of what we are now, the skills and talents that we have came from, or it's in the DNA and the bloodline. Um, mm -hmm. If you can tell me a little bit about mom, dad, aunties, uncles, great, you know, whomever, did any <laughs> of them have any of this artistic flair that- you know, you yeah, I'm trying to uh, get to know my roots more, actually, and get to actually, you know, do the whole decolonization of the brain thing. Let's go. Uh, uh, but the, my family's from Tondo. So if you know Tondo Manila, it's very much like gang fighting, you know, like super, fa like not favelas, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's yeah. pretty tough, right? Um, my mom uh, had me when she was 15. So I come from a very, very, very super beneath poverty family. Um, so I get a lot of my resilience from her. I found out that, you know, my great grandma uh, during World War II, she was a seamstress and she provided for all of the family that couldn't provide for themselves because the the males were taken off and killed by the Japanese soldiers. Um, you know, my grandma has a, a story of her own there. So it's like, it's like so much generational trauma that I draw from, right? Um, my mom, interestingly enough, when I found out that she used to be, she wanted to be an actress when she was younger. And she got into like the whole like extra world in the Philippines, but then, the, you know, like it was even worse with the uh, exploitation of women yeah. during that time, especially in the Philippines. So my, my grandma pulled her out of it. But if there was like a little bit of an artisticness there that kind of flowed through the, the veins, I think there was that longing there. Um, yeah. And, and I didn't necessarily set out to be an actress or a director, but it's somewhere there in the lineage, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to just follow where the doors are opening. That's kind of been my thing. Like I, mm -hmm. from, you know, a little bit about me, but yeah, like during that whole cult stuff, I, I dropped out of school because I thought Jesus was coming. <laughs> so I have no, no formal education in anything. Like all of my education is on sets. It's, it's work education. It is really like starting at the grunt level and moving up. Um, so if that gives anybody any inspiration and hope is like, yeah, you can be a PGA member, you can make feature films, you can learn about the business of the business, you can do, you know, all of these acting things without like without an education, still go get an education, you know, like I'm not going to say, you know, but like, hopefully it's like inspirational to people that like, even if you don't like there's still a pathway to quote unquote success, whatever Definitely. you do. Definitely. And I completely agree. And I can co-sign that for myself. Uh, as well, uh, whenever we do the Kuya P episode, um, I hope I, I, I'm with you there, and thank you for sharing that, Giovanni. And for those that are curious, if we're going to get into all of that, yes, we will. So uh, it's just going to be in stages. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and shout out to Grandma. I'm curious if she was also a gorilla, because you know when the men were being pulled off and being killed, you know the women were holding it down, and they uh, were. You know what I'm saying? And also yeah. we're the ones like. You know, sniping. I forgot who's uh, who did I have? Diana Paragas. Shout out to Diana. I love her. Uh, if she's you have never seen Yellow Rose, y'all go check out Yellow Rose. She's a previous guest that I've had on, and she's working on a film about you know those amazing female gorillas that we had. Our women hold it down. Shout out to no, all no. Filipino women. Yeah, this is this is this, you can see like uh, this is this is the book that I'm reading right now. For Let's this go. Book. You know. Oh so, yeah, I do. I was like, wait, wait, what? Why is this right here on my? <laughs> in my bag right now. It's because I can like be like this. Yeah, this Benai gorillas. Like the women are fierce in, from the Philippines, and you know, like just I don't I don't know if that was my my great grandma. Uh, my great grandma, she used her entrepreneurial skills to you know repair things for the Japanese soldiers, which she had to do. You know, and I'm sure that there was like a lot of things that she had to go through in order to keep that job, which like breaks my heart. But she doesn't ever talk about that stuff. So. But or she, she was strong. Yeah. She was strong. All of our, our women, y'all, y'all, 
y'all are strong. Yeah. So shout out to my <laughs> Filipino women. I love y'all. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about um before we get to high school and the cult and everything like that. Okay, what would yeah. uh let's go through one to ten, ages one to ten. Uh <laughs> you know, and then I guess moving from there when you came over to the, the States. Uh so because from my understanding, you're born in the Philippines and yeah. when you talk about ages one through ten. Uh what would your parents tell me about a young Giovanni Espiritu? <laughs> Gosh, my 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 mom would probably not remember me very much. She came, she left me when I was one in the Philippines. I stayed with my grandma, um, and then I came over with my grandmother uh, as a tourist, and we were Tago and Tago when I was two. And I'm like, oh gosh, can I still say these things because of the administration that is coming in? It's actually scary to me to like be like, oh. But I think, uh, I think how I got my citizenship is that when I turned 10 or something like that, there was some kind of like refugee opening thing that my dad filed for. So I'm a citizen. So hopefully I don't need to be scared now. Um, but yeah, I came here when I was two. And then from, I guess, two to 10, two to 14, I was in the, you know, in the American education system. And then I went back to the Philippines when I was 14. That's when all the cult stuff happened. And then it came back when I was like, I don't know, uh, 16 or 17. Um, okay. here. So did I just skip over like a whole yeah, bunch Yeah, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So yeah. what were um, you, in, one through 10, what were you, what can you remember like the first things of that interested in you? Uh, was, your interests? Uh, in my first interest? Activities. You know, like it, it's, it's weird because when I remember one through 10, I like, I remember living in the garage of my great grandma's house outside of the cow palace, you know, like like, I remember that stuff. Uh, my parents weren't around very much. I remember spending a lot of time with my grandma. I switched schools, like, maybe, gosh, I think switched schools, like, 12 times within, like, the times that I grew up. So before I even, like, left school because of the cult, we were switching schools all the time. So I don't remember a lot. There's, like, gaps in my memory. Okay. Um, but th th that's normal for trauma people. What would my mom say about me? Like, what did I like? Yeah. And how did that affect you, though, all of that? And because I, I what I like to I'd like to also talk about the th those things because we draw that, you know, because especially as we're talking as artists now. To yeah. Help us with our performances and how it, you know, we can learn from those things. And also to let people know that no matter if you've experienced that like that to co to relate with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, you can, like you were saying earlier, no matter if you don't even have an education, you take from that and you just you can yeah. make it happen. I think I was very adaptable as a child uh, because you remember my mom had me when she was 15. So she didn't know what she was doing when she was being a mom either. You know, like yeah. she was just trying to grow up as well. And I, I, I imagine that she was just trying to keep it together. So things like keeping me in like a uh, stable environment was not stable in terms of school. As long as she got me in a school, I think that was like, yes, I did it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. So it's, uh, yes, you know, like I remember there were there were weeks where I was wearing the same clothes every single day to school, you know, but it was probably like, yes, I got my child to school that day. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you got to take and, your wins where you can. Yeah. And so like the, there are those memories that I have being a child. Um, I think my mom would say that I was generally uh, I, I would make the best out of every situation. Maybe I would whine a lot. I remember getting sick a lot. I got a lot of tonsillitis during that time. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like I don't were you a little showgirl. Did you act up a lot to just overcome no, other things? No, or? Not think... acting up in regard into in the negative connotation, like hey mom play dress up or show or oh, God, grandma no. you were saying with grandma you know what i'm saying just like little yeah, things no. that you would watch well, on tv and things like that yeah i remember in fourth grade there in fourth grade there was a speech competition that you know that that had like a little bit of an inkling of like the the acting thing okay. um but the reason why i remember it is because my mom was very much like i did a speech when i was younger and it it started it was like about the filipino something and it was like alms alms spare me a piece of bread spare me your mercy i'm a child so young so thin and so ragged like see i remember this as an adult that my mom was like doing this as a child and then she yeah. would do this performance and then she'd be like okay now do your speech <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> you know, um, and she would she like, but I remember her being so proud of me for for winning that speech competition about like holding on to your dreams and going for it. Um, so yeah, like maybe that's I got my first inkling of like, oh, I'm valuable if I'm a performer, you know. Mm. So yeah. So if it wasn't acting yet or anything like that was in there, were there things that you saw that you wanted to do or just aspire to at all? I remember wanting to be a paleontologist. I remember I, I loved dinosaurs. So how did that come through? Like, where did that come from, you think? I don't know. I just like going to the museums. I think that probably came from the fact that we were living in San Francisco and the times that I would spend with my dad, which, you know, is another thing that I'm trying to, like, figure out, right? Like, that's another thing that I haven't even wanting to touch. When my dad was in my life, he used yeah. to take me to the California Academy of Sciences all the time. Okay. So, that was like, oh, science is cool. You know, like, that's where that kind of came from. Um, yeah. But I didn't really have any inkling of, like, I want to be a performer. Because okay. that, wasn't, that wasn't in my vocabulary. I remember I used to have a cousin who used to go to have like her little ballet things and recitals. And I remember being like, so bored. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. Just like, you know, like for instance, so there's a lot of, as well as male Asians, right? I'm not the car Asian. I'm not the, you know, I think cars look cool, but I'm not souping up. You know how like, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. on the West Coast cats, y'all know yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I'm not the math Asian. I'm not the engineering Asian. I'm the creative Asian, the the nerdy Asian, if you will. So, you know, how those things influence us growing up and, and all of that. Yeah. So curious some of those touchstones of your I life. Think it's like, I think, yeah, like uh, my cousin who was like the the kind of like, the, you know, like a not a sister, but you know, like the thing that you like look at and you're like, oh, why do they get those things, right? So yeah. she went to private school. She got clothes all the time. And she used to go to all these extracurricular classes that I just didn't understand that was like, I was like, why, how come I don't get that? Oh, it's because I go to public school and they don't have those. And, you know, she's, but I didn't have any um, inkling of like what class was or like, you know, like what what it was to have more than, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we were so very like, yeah, no, you're going to public school. This is all you get. You get a dollar twenty-five for your lunch every single day. And, you know, you gotta take care of yourself. You put yourself in your own clothes every day, child. <laughs> you know, so did that make you have any animosity at all? Um, towards my cousin? Yeah. Towards family? Yeah. Or did you just well, yeah, okay? Yeah. Super like like, but I didn't know how to express it either. You know what I mean? Um, because I was very much conditioned to be like the good girl, you know. Yeah. Like, don't like that's the way that I got love from my mom is like be not being not being a burden, not being difficult, you know, like being like the performative child. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, being the one that she could because I'm 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 her I'm, I'm her only, you know, um, yeah. now, she you know, she has a another kid in the Philippines, but. Like at that time, I was like the only one. So I was like, I want to be good, right? Like, yeah, I feel that. And it's just, you know, we're, we, can, we can't control the cards that were dealt. Yeah. But it's how we take those cards and use that towards everything else. You know, yeah. we choose to how we want to just move forward with that. And right. I always like to talk on these things. And I know it, they can be difficult. And I apologize if, if, if bringing some of this stuff brings. But I think it just helps that. It shows again, no matter the cards we're dealt, it's how we utilize that and we push exactly. forward. Exactly. So, 100%. 100%. Thank you. Yeah. And, and like, there's the, these stuff is like difficult to talk about in the Filipino community because there is so much toxicity in there that we exactly. don't want to talk about these things about family because there's so much shame involved. But we have to talk about them because otherwise, how do they get resolved? How do we move forward from there? How do we even recognize the patterns that are, you know, um, not healthy, you know, unless we talk about it. Agreed. So thank you for sharing, Giovanni. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move into 10 to 18. Um, but before we get in there, um, I, I, I want to throw in this little bit of uh, uh, culture, because again, this is a show about show. We're talking about that Filipino identity. Okay. Um, you moving from the Philippines to the U.S. Yeah. Finding out that I'm Filipino. I'm this brown girl or, you know, whatever. How did, when did you learn you were different in society or did you ever feel that or were you around 
the culture was around you, you know, as a, I, I as I told you earlier and in, in people that have seen recent episodes, I'm really learning about myself here. I thought I was a mix half Asian kid, half white kid. Now I know that my white father isn't my father. I'm mostly Filipino as people are learning through the show pal show. Now, um, what was that like for you finding out? Oh, am I, I'm a Filipino American or, you know, what was that like finding your identity? Well, Did you know yeah. that coming in the Philippines or coming over racism, you know, all of that. All that. Oh, that's such a big question. Right. <laughs> I know it's that's huge. Um, and I have to like, like, like I said, like, it's hard for me to se separate like stuff that's happening in my past because there's so many different like gaps sometimes. No worries. If you go uh, back and forth, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is going to be like, uh, you know, what is that? Like the, the, the one of those films that where you go here, 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 here. Right. Um, so like when I was in the fourth grade, I remember, so until the fourth grade, everybody called me Anne or Cycle or Clang Clang, right? So Anne is what I thought my name was. Cycle is my middle name that my dad named me. And then Clang Clang is like, you know, it's my doorbell nickname that, <laughs> that for my Filipino doorbell. I was curious nickname. about the Clang Clang because I saw that in yeah. your profile. I was like, where's yeah, Clang Clang? So Clang Clang. Um, evidently, they say it's because like I used to hit pans and pots all the time. And that's Clang 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 Clang, you know, so that's where I got my nickname from. Um, but when I was in the fourth grade, because that is a time when like the whole refugee program was and, and my dad started taking me to downtown all the time. I didn't understand why, but I found out that my real name is Giovanni. So I didn't even know for a long time what my real name was. And then like, that's like an identity thing. And I like that. I was like, oh, this is this is different. This is weird. What is this? Um, Phil being Filipino, I, I was raised in a multi-generational family when I first came to the United States, what my first thoughts, you know, I was living in the garage in my great grandma's house, which like had my great grandma, my tutitos, you know, my kuya in there, my mom, my dad, you know, like just all this family, like living in one house. And that's what I knew, you know, so I didn't understand that other people like live differently. When I was like in second grade and I went to my friend's house for the very first time and she was like a very, very pretty white girl, right? I was like, it was like weird because I was like, wait, you guys don't drink soda all the time? <laughs> you know, like, wh why why do we have to sit at the table and like eat? You guys, what what is this? You know, like it was just like a, a weird thing um, to see other people, like the way that middle class America, like kind of like lived. Um, and then like, as I was like, when I was in high school, obviously, I knew we, I was Filipino, but I didn't know exactly what that meant, right? Like, because I had, you know, like, there was nothing when when I was when my mom divorced and left my dad or something like that, we, we left that ge multi generational family and kind of like tried just lived Normal, you know, normal, you know, like there was no like Filipino aspects other than the fact that we ate rice all the time. And, you know, I had to chop onions for like menudo or whatever. Um, but uh, but when I was in high school, so there was something that happened. Okay, And I'll just like do an overview of things. Uh, my stepfather was uh, abusive and not a very like in very bad way. And my mom was going back and forth to the Philippines a lot. So I left my mom and my stepfather to live with my grandparents because my mom decided to stay with him, even though she found out what happened. I stayed with my grandma and my grandfather for a while until my grandfather got sick. And my mom said, there's better health care in the Philippines. So we have to bring him back to the Philippines. And I was like, I love my grandpa. So yes, I'll go with you. And this was high school. And so when I went back to the Philippines in sophomore year, that's when I was like, oh, this is the Philippines. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was super culture shock because I had been raised very Americanized, right? Incredibly Americanized. And then when I went back to the Philippines, I found out that my mom had another family and uh, I had to live in a place with like 16 other people, strangers that I didn't know. Um, and it was extreme culture shock, extreme. Um, but I was immersed in the Filipino culture, you know? <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm still learning, you know what I mean, about it. I'm still learning about culture. I'm still learning about, um, like, the capwa-ness of it all. Yeah. Because I have very, very, my, my thoughts about that, like, are very weird because when I went to the Philippines, like, the, the one thing that Filipinos do, and everybody knows this now, is that Filipinos can sing, right? So during this time of like super turmoil and my mom having another family and me like searching for family, um, my my grandma took me to church and I fell in love with the youth group because they could sing, right? Yeah. They just could sing, right? And I was just like, this is a group of young people that want to change the world and make it better. And we all want to like be kind to one another. Yes, right? So it was like hook line and sinker I was done and I was there every single week for like fire bible study everything and when it got radicalized I was like yes Jesus is coming I need to like quit everything and like you know learn how to farm and learn survival skills and all that stuff so this is you where know, the cult thing is coming into a little but bit. yeah but um, like though like so like my feelings about like family and Filipino and culture and and you know, are all mixed in with like that weird toxicity too. And like, I'm with you. Religion, you know what I mean? Totally. So, yeah. So like, I, I don't know, like I'm still trying to sort myself out from that because when I came out of the cult, um, there was a lot of like weird things about that because, you know, like you love your family, like, mm -hmm. like even, even though things are shitty, you love your family and you want them to be proud of you and you don't want to do anything to like, separate yourself from them but sometimes you have to in order to keep yourself safe and healthy right definitely so, so definitely. when i left that cult when i left that church some of my family was still in it and so yeah. there was definitely that like you know that filipino guilt plus the christian guilt you know <laughs> so you know yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to get back to what it feels like to be safe in community and for the people right. around me that know me like like that no know, know me um, they know that I'm a super introvert, like being extroverted, being around crowds, being around people is very, very difficult for me. And I have to like, like power up to do that. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, thankfully, you know. Which is so wild as performers. Like we are about performance, but at the same time, I'm just, y'all think I'm like, or I, I think you could probably relate to like, th they think that we're so extroverted, but no, I'm really I'm trying to just chill. Uh, there's just too much. No, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I play extrovert really well, but I'm I'm not right. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, there's there's a couple of groups in the in in LA that have been really awesome, like the Philam Creative uh, group, mm. where they're really honestly trying to get rid of the crab mentality in the Filipino community and really trying to like lift people up. Yeah. Um. You know, like that's and I and like you know the thing like the decolonization thing where it's like crab mentality comes from the colonization, right? Like where we're trying to tattle tail on each other and make put each other down so we can we can look look like we're better in the eyes of the white people, right? You know, like girl, yes, you know, like um, Ugh. but. Yeah, like there's, I, I'm so like off topic. <laughs> no, no, no. It's I'm like i It's like even like right now. With, with where America's heading right now, like we, I am not proud of being American. Straight up. I was going to put an F word in there, but like, yeah. And just, I'm proud to be a Filipino. And that's the whole reason the show was started. But then, because there's so many moments, personally for me, when Filipino, we would get together, you know, the, you know, we, when we Filipinos, we thought we show out party. And I remember that positive experiences there, but now a lot of those parties, because of, the whole Christian thing, you know, is so part of it. But then to me, we aren't originally Christians. Spain brought that stuff. And there's that whole thing that that and with that generational thing. And uh, and we have D Duarte now and like everybody believes in Duarte, but he's a killer. He's the Trump of the Philippines. And it's like, uh, yeah, there's so yeah, there's just so much there. There's so much to unpack. And like sometimes they get overwhelmed with it all. And I'm just like, OK, yeah. When I get really overwhelmed, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to remember that I'm right here. Like, there's nobody that's outside of me that's, like, really honestly right now that's coming after me. So I'm okay, right? Yeah. I'm going to be thankful that I have a roof over my head. I have 
uh, you know, food in my belly, you know, I'm going to be thankful for those things, even though there's, we know that there's all kinds of stuff that's happening right now. I have to, if I think about all those things, like yeah. I want to help change it, but if I, I will get overwhelmed. And so I have to like, really, I have to take care of myself so I can take care of other people. Let's right? go. Yes. Agreed. And you also, I, I want to bring this in. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you don't, if you don't mind, because I see that with a lot of your work, um, mm -hmm. my LGBTQ brothers and sisters, you know, uh, like that whole Christian thing there and preventing that and not, you know, uh, I just had the amazing Ron Blakely on who's, uh, I don't know if you know him. He's a West Coast singer, performer out of the Bay Area and him keeping in the closet because of our people. You know what I'm saying? It's just really? still. Yeah. Well, no, he's out of the closet now, and he's okay. Amazing, I was right? like, wait, but just we, did he just how get he, outed on the so show? No, 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 no. I would never do that. <laughs> okay, I would never I'm do sorry. that. But just how, just how he had to because of our culture, you right. know, and, and religion, and just that's what, like it pushed me away from religion in a lot of different respects. Like I was raised Christian, but as you know, there's these cult things that happen. Like no. Yeah. And I have Muslim yeah. and everybody, friends of any religion. Like, I don't want to be labeled. Uh, fuck labels. Excuse me. Now I'm already getting cursed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, because so can we talk about that? Because I love how prideful and all the work you've done for the community um, is, is out there. Um, when did you, if, if can we, did what, did you know in 1 through 10, 10 through 18 uh, during that time period? Because we're in that period at the moment uh, of, of finding that sexual identity. Or did you not know that later? I don't. I don't think that I had the words for it. You know what I okay, mean? Okay. Like, yeah. When I was younger, and then, yeah. you know, when I was in like, I guess you know, when I was like seventh or eighth grade, I did have a quasi relationship with with uh, another person in my theater in in the in like this uh, ACT, which is the American Conservatory Theater, had like a youth program, and I got into the summer program one year, and like I, I had a crush on somebody. You know what I mean? Like. I didn't have the words for it because I didn't even like do the crushy thing because I was like, you know, like it's all weird. It's all weird. It's like a weird feeling in time. Yeah. And then I got involved with the church pretty hardcore. So any feelings that I had, stuff them down, right? Super yeah. Stuff them down. Um, and then when I started coming out of the the cult stuff and started to like be like, oh wait. I do have crushes on women and that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Because I just pushed it out of my head for such a long time. Um, so yeah, like it's, 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 it's been a process. It's like, even just coming out of the cult, just getting out of that mindset is a process. So even opening up to like, wait, what are my preferences in life? Yeah, That is another process. But I, I would say that I didn't quite put a word to it until my space. You know, because yeah. MySpace had that, had that, like, what are you? You know what I mean? It had those boxes. And I was like, oh, wait, bye. That's a thing. That's yeah. a thing that people could be. That's me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because, like, there was, like, a word for it. And there was, like, a label in a way that I was like, oh, that's me. Just like ADHD. I did not know that I was ADHD until later on. And on so many, so, so, so much of my life, I just thought I was a really dumb and that I didn't get it. Right. But now I was like, I'm like, no, my brain just works differently. And that's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's all about finding our true selves and just, uh, I, I want people to understand that it's a process, you yeah. know, and, and that's why we bring these up. Uh, and f finding our identity and just celebrating our identity and yeah and, and how we get and just those journeys uh, in 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 that process. Um, so I know I'm going all over the place. I'm even losing my place in now in this conversation. Uh, but I just want uh, to help guide you through as we share. Yes, um, yes, yes. So just I think we're in the ten to eighteen before we go off to college. Um, <laughs> just. Call any any fundamental things that are milestones you think that helps form Giovanni Espiritu between you know, as we started one to eighteen before we go off to college and where as we as here in in America where that's when we go find ourselves, uh, it, you know and but I think even then we know that you're not still finding yourselves. It's 
even through other things that happen in life. I haven't uh, found myself now. <laughs> right? We're still doing that. Yeah. I'm still finding myself. And I don't think that it's ever going to end, honestly, because True. not only are we not finding it, we're like, it's not about finding yourself. I think it's about creating yourself, actually. Mm. You know, um, yes. like I'm, I'm finding the stories that have been told to me that I have believed about myself and then creating what I want to be and who I want to be from that. Does that make yes. sense? That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. I, until last year, my whole life I thought was this and it's now not. And yeah, now and how do I go from here? And that's okay because every freaking moment is new, you know? Yeah. Like as, okay. So like one of the things that I do as an actor and as an, as an acting coach is like at the beginning of every single scene that you do, every single scene that you do, it has to be new. Otherwise it's not truthful, right? You can't do a replay of what you did the last time. You can understand what your motivations are and why you say those things. But the actual moment of saying those things within the scene should be new and it should be fresh and it should be at just that moment. I feel like the same thing happens for our life. Like this moment with you is new, right? Like I can choose who I want to be in this moment and what values I want re to represent in this moment, you know, like and I can create who I want to be in the next moment, right? Like it can be totally different. The stories that have been told to me about myself, like I am not worthy. I am from a very low caliber type of people, which they were told to me. Uh, I don't need to believe those because I am new today, right? Like I am new today. And not only that is like, are those stories even true? When I go back and I research, I was like, Tondo used to be a kingdom. You know, Tondo used to have kings and rajas, rajas. Yeah. You know, like before it was colonized, before like like uh, capitalism took over and depleted our resources, we used to be a nation of gold. You know, like when I went back to the Philippines to go see my mom and my grandma after nine years, like I went to the Ayala Museum and they have this display of like Philippine gold. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I did not know this about the Philippines. You know, like our ancestors used to be dripping in gold, dripping in gold. And why was this never told to us? Why is all of the stories that I was told about myself is that, oh, no, we're not good enough. We're not light enough. We're not, you know, educated enough to be like the white people. We want to be more like the mestizos and the European colonizers, you know? Like, why was it not told to us that, you know, our lineage is people of gold, you know, like people that were dripping in gold, people nice that were very colorful, people that had, you know, two spirit people within our own indigenous communities, you know, like that was never told to us. And that's, you know, that's part of the things that I'm like learning now. Yeah, you know? same. So, yeah. And you know, like when I when I left the cult um, and like my worldview of the world came crashing down because everything that I had believed in before, you know, like was a lie. Yeah. And I had did like, I don't know, four years, maybe four years of my life, maybe more than that. Because so that I was in the teen age, high school. Mix. Yeah, teenage. But, you know, like it, 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 it like. It, it was a process of getting out to and like yeah. because of the cult I ended up marrying underage and um you know like getting out of that it became violent and getting out of that relationship was even you know like mm. it, it it took some time you know it's like never like a it was it was not an easy process <laughs> you know but um but yeah like just unlearning the stories that we had been told about ourselves unlearning the stories right now that you know women should be demure so demure so mindful right um especially as an asian woman you know like where yes you know how how am i acceptable in the world i'm only acceptable in the world if i pa -ba -ba myself right like that's and that is that is a true that is a story that is told but it's not necessarily the truth right so I know like in certain situations that I have to ba ba, -ba myself to be acceptable. Mm. But in my brain, I'm like, I'm actually smarter than y'all. But I can't say that because that will 
inflame other people you know like that's a whole okay so like i'm gonna i'm gonna pivot a little bit no um that's, yeah that's a whole reason why like i'm like the doing the made to shine so the series that i'm doing in las vegas that ashley is a part of it's called made to shine m-a-i-d to shine and it's it's a little bit on the play on the thought that you know we are acceptable to the world as like the helpers and the domestic servants, right? Like if you look in like media, a lot of the Filipinos are like maids, they're like helpers or like nurses, which is cool. Nurses are cool, right? Yeah. Not, not enough of them that are depicted on screen. That's another conversation, but, um, but it's made to shine because this, 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 the, the lead of my show, who is like a Filipina maid that's working in the service industry, she actually has a really great talent that is not shown and it's hidden. And she is, she goes on this journey on about shining herself, you know? Yeah. Um, and like one of the things that I loved about Dolly De Leon's performance in Triangle of Sadness is that, you know, love uh, Dolly and I loved love her it. performance in that. Oh my yeah, God. But you know how like it was it, it was so healing to the soul where I was just like, yeah, she's the fucking captain. You fucking call her captain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was Hell just like, yeah. you know, like Hell there's yeah. something in my soul that I just love that because she's the one that knew how to do all the things, you know, but she would never be seen as that, mm -hmm. you know, and there was, you know, that's 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 kind of how I feel about like our culture is like we are seen as the ba -ba -ba a little bit, but mm -hmm not that we are so resilient yes you know? um and i want to center our stories more um because of that yes and i don't want to get to all of that all right. yeah. i just want to get that before story before we like get there so i get to the before up, story i don't remember did i i was like wait i kind of just went on a little bit of a tangent no i love it and uh, <laughs> it, no it's beautiful and thank you i appreciate you sharing all of this so I, I, so let's get to where we get to those points so so you didn't go did you go to school out so like post high school because a lot of the times the way we do this is uh well have done in the past but everybody's st everyone's story is different and also don't want to bring up certain traumas that couldn't be traumatic in as part of those stories but unless we want to to build those lessons from those traumas so uh because you know after high school you go, you go to college but then you know a lot of us I, we didn't, know is, I didn't even finish high school wow I so you know and and uh, with that being, you know, how they like were supposed to if, become a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. But yep. the arts for a lot of us is what we wanted. But that's okay as long as it's, you know, not what you want to do, you know, because it doesn't pay well unless we're in the Philippines. But then there's certain things. Yeah. I so guess... let's get to those stories rising up out of the cult and then finding <laughs> your voice. And I there was a like... film I saw that, you know, they wrote about it. I, I want to see that, what that's okay. all about. Yeah, oh, let's go. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's so many things. So my mom, uh, if you remember, she had me when she was 15, so she yes. didn't really know how to parent or anything like that. So I never really had the expectations of like being anything or anyone. Honestly, yeah. like I think she I just was. Want to give you a big hug right now with all of that. Just... Oh, thank you. <sighs> I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Like you know, like I, uh, she's very proud of me now, but I think she was just trying to survive too, and yeah. just like, yeah. figuring out herself on her own. So I didn't. I didn't have like the pressure of like, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, she was just like, yeah, go do your thing. <laughs> and I think she was happy that I was like in love with God and like doing like missionary stuff. And like, because I wasn't getting into trouble. Right. Like, yeah, my whole rebellion was doing Bible studies and taking my Bibles out and like doing studies with strange. I was I was that that kid i had my bible in my little thing with like the little tabs and i would go up to people on street and like give like bible studies it was horrible horrible i was a whole, like anyway um yeah. yeah so like i didn't have that pressure but also when the stuff in the cult got a little bit you know more radicalized and you know uh like they said that the main church was uh like it was filled with apostates, you know, like that they had been infiltrated and we had to go into the mountains and learn survival skills and you had to quit school. And because if you love God, then you would do this and you would prepare for the end time. So, yeah, I quit school and I never went to college. So by the time that um, I got out of that cult, I had a kid, you know, and I have a kid and my kid isn't the best thing ever. Um, and I love them so much. Um, but I because I was so focused on like survival and like 
making money. Um, so yeah. like the weird thing, this is how I got into acting is like I was living in the mountains and, you know, like I didn't have any friends and I would try to keep the telemarketers on the telephone because they were the only people I would talk to. And uh, and one of them was like, you have a really interesting voice. You should try voiceovers. I had no idea what voiceovers was. And this was like in the times of like dial up, like internet, you know, like where you still had to wait for the shh, 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 right? All that stuff. Yeah, um, AOL. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was still during that times. And my ex had quit his job. And I was like, Oh, shoot, I have a kid that I need to take care of and stuff. And um, I just looked up on the internet. And I was like, what is this voiceovers thing? So the first thing that popped up was this agency called stars in San Francisco, which was four hours from where we lived at the time. And um, I sent in a stupid recording, they ended up calling me in, signing me on the spot, sending me to my very first audition for a video game called my street and i ended up booking up made it more money than i had ever made like in a month wow of and i was like oh it's a sign from god right so that was like my path out from yeah. from it's it wasn't my path out from the cult it was just the beginnings of the path out yeah. um because it was like oh i needed to make money here's a way that opened up for this money my ex-husband was like, oh, this is, I guess this is a sign from God. So he allowed me to do it. So that's mm. when I started getting back into the world. Um, so yeah, like I don't have an education. And then like when I started working a lot in the industry, um, that's when it, I started like getting to know more people and people seeing our situation. When people gave me a book about, you know, a domestic violent relationship. And I was like, oh, shoot, I'm in one. I have a child, you know. Yeah. And it was like a whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like I don't have an education. And all I did was continue following the path that was laid out in front of me. So, like, I don't like what can people pull from this is that just take the next best step. That's all that I can, that I could do, you know, because if I tried to think too far down the path, I would get overwhelmed. So it's just like, what is the next best step for me in this particular situation? Man. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, God, oh, just hu virtual hug, virtual hug. <laughs> thank you, um, thank you. Cause like uh, what I'm caring about is what did you, it's like, you've been following, Thankfully, I guess these people were helping guide you in different respects, you know, and had your best interest in mind. What did nope. you want in life? Hopefully. Who are these people that you speak of? Which well, I hope, well, I'm hoping, you know, and like, but what did you really want out of life? And then you had this. Oh, dude. Okay. Yeah. When you talk about like, how did I know that I was a Filipino when I was, so it was part of this, you know, like one day this will be like, people will chop this up and put it in like the the right linear order right yeah but part of like working in the cult this is this the, i worked for a couple in the yosemite mountains and i was underage at the time i didn't know that you know i didn't know what the labor laws were i was just like i'm working for god <laughs> right and then and uh uh and i was very thankful because i they gave me a place to live Right. And I was doing all these things and I would work really hard because it was for the Lord. Right. And the way that they framed it was that I was working for God, but I was actually working for their business when I look back at it. Um, but one of their neighbors was like, you know, like, oh, my brother married one of you, you know, like those types of situations. And Microaggressions, like, I bullshit. And yeah. And like the rumor was in this neighborhood was that this couple that I worked for had a slave. And I remember being like, I'm not a slave. I know how to speak English and they may pay me cash every week. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they were totally not paying me like the right rates. It was like literally $5 for like all this stuff that I was doing. But I was like, I'm working for the Lord. Right. Um, but yeah, that's 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 how I knew I was other a little bit, you know. <laughs> Mm. yeah um but yeah who are we education yeah i have no education so i everything i learned on the job i do try like i did try to go to college for a little bit like my mm. when my kid went to college i tried to go to college too but i just couldn't handle it yeah. because i was like trying to like like trying to provide for your child plus going to college is very very difficult and i just couldn't handle it so i was yeah. like 
I couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm still, I still work. I still try to like learn as much as I can. I still try to like get better at what I can get better at, but through like a lot of, a lot of the things, classes I've, I've taken have been, been thankfully through like scholarships and grants. So like I went through the UCB program, uh, all, all four classes, uh, on scholarship, from them and you know like that's how I learn that's I've been very yeah. fortunate for that and then like on the job training st type stuff for like you know the producers guild like I do all kinds of I did I did all kinds of grunt work I'm trying to not do that anymore yeah. but yeah I did all kinds of grunt work so how did you so what did you all right you got into voiceover work out of, out of crazy way and you found work there that paid so much money now and did you because that wasn't a love that you had before it was more so a way out than anything i then loved it though it was really fun work you know i was very grateful for it but it wasn't really something that i set out to do when i was younger you know like i had I'm, I'm sorry I, i'm like so so but so you you're doing it because just out of necessity in ways without really a passion in a heart and i want to know what you're passionate about and like and moving forward and yeah, so it's building into now with like especially with the maiden thing that you're doing now finding your own voice i want to get to giovanni esperutu standing on all 10 with both feet 10 toes oh my 10 toes proud and, and gripping the carpet with my toes <laughs> girl celebrating you because uh, i'm uh, like i feel just wow this journey yeah um, and i don't want to bring up stuff that hurts but I, I want to build confidence. I, I want to help talk to the uh, somebody who is going through what you went through to before you are where you're at now and speak to that person that might be in that okay, and how so you're coming up out of it. And now you're finding your own voice and you're doing such amazing things and you're doing yeah. this great thing in, uh, in Las Vegas now uh, uh, and finding yourself in acting and, <laughs> okay. and did, how did that happen? And, as, as long as, you know, being happy with that and not doing it because of other people, but for you. Well, I'm still like, I, I don't know yet on that, honestly. But like the, the way that it happened from uh, voiceover to acting is that I was doing so much. I was consistently booking voiceover jobs that my agents will sign you because they know that they can make money off of you. Honestly, like that is. Ooh they work right so they were like well you're doing well so well in voiceover we want you to transition to do some on-camera stuff we want to send you in our on-camera department uh, we want you to take this class so I was like okay here's this class and my husband at the time and I put this in quotes because you know like it, whatever it's it's a thing yeah. um uh, he allowed me to do it because I was the one that was bringing in money. So I started going to this class and this is a class where, you know, I started learning about like, people were like, Oh, why do you have to go down to the lobby so quickly? Why are you going to get in trouble if you're late? You know, um, where people were kind of pick up on picking up on the fact that I was in an abusive relationship. So, you know, this is the class that kind of got me out of that. This is also the class where, um, I did a showcase eight months later, got signed to an LA agent, and then I booked ER, which was my first union gig. It was a recurring role on ER, which was one of the biggest shows at the time, you know, uh, so that's how I got into the acting part of it. And everything else has just like been like, Ugh, I, I just need to keep moving forward like getting better at the acting thing, you know, teaching. So this, this school that I went to, they started having me teach. That's how I started teaching 20 years ago. You know, like that's how that built up and just how I started, uh, you know, doing producing stuff is that I did a show, I think in 2015, I think it's 2015. It, it was a, a show called Dyke Central in the Bay Area. And I started doing associate producing work on that. Um, which is basically, you know, finding locations, helping with casting, all that stuff. The administrative stuff, I was really good at it. So that was like how I built that. Um, and just one step in front of the other, honestly, for all that that stuff. And what would I would say to somebody that was in my situation at that point in time is like, just honestly, take it one step at a time. Make sure that you have your go bag uh, 
if you need to be safe about things, sometimes you can't tell people what you're doing if they are dangerous. So know who your safe people are um, and build support around you because you like it's really scary to leave a situation like that alone. So know who you can count on for support um, and just start building these things a little by little if you have to. Go to therapy, go to therapy, go to therapy, because that will help uh, separate the thoughts that were given to you and put in your head between your thoughts. Um, so those are my those are my things yes. for people in my situation. And, you know, like, how did I find my own identity and my voice? Um, it's still a process, right? Like, yeah. even now, it's like, well, who am I now? Who am I in this moment? I don't know, right? Um, yeah. But I I think journaling is helpful and a lot of my art and a lot of the stuff that I write about tends to be things that I know that I've been through, you know, things that I want to make better. So, you know, like what is the world that I want to see? That is usually what I write about or how is it that I yes. am the things that I get angry about that I want to change. That is what I write about. So those are that's how I kind of find my voice. Um, but it's really hard to separate out what is truly your own thoughts versus what were shoved down your throat when you were younger yes. and what was shoved down your throat that society says that you need to believe. Woo! Tell it. Tell it. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love what you're about and what you're doing and what you've overcome and are still overcoming because it's a process and it's a journey. Yeah. Girl, like, ugh, wow. Um, can we talk about, you You spoke on it a little bit, um, this uh, performance uh, act, uh, you made in, I'm, I, I'm forgetting the title. How, just, how did that come about? And then also, you know, get into singing. You have your ultra feminist. Uh, when I clicked on, like the, you had another song that I think I saw here, like being a singer, like how did all these things, <laughs> happen I i'm assuming you know once you've got yourself out of it you know you're and we're still in it in different mixes but you're you're finding your voice through it all yeah and, i have no plan finding your voice it. yeah so okay so that there's, there's there's two songs on there one is called ultra feminist and the other one is like i think i want to be where the people aren't where the people aren't which is okay so i, well, I want to be where the people aren't is kind of like a parody song that i made about the little mermaids uh part of your world so it was originally the introverts world funny thing about that song is is that in 2016 a youtuber named tessa netting took the lyrics to my song and she sang it and it went viral to think about three million and this is before like tiktok and like it was so readily available to like go viral and stuff this was like when it was like oh my god three million uh -huh, right yeah. um but like people kept asking me about you know what because i was i was i was butthurt at the time because i was like wait how can she take my stuff and then her make money off of it and then you know whatever whatever and i was like it's only it was only afterwards that i realized oh the reason why i went viral for her is because one she had a, an audience already and two she's a thin white lady so mm. on the internet that has you know money for it and you pair that with something that resonates with people like as a joke you know then okay it goes viral so that's that song take a listen i like it it's a fun song uh it's it's a parody about being an introvert and not wanting to talk to people um and then the other song ultra feminist so again i write about things that make me angry right that is my inspiration for things i like spite write a lot <laughs> so we all do we all yeah. do so Ultra Feminist was first a poem that I did at Outfest. It was just me talking to the camera and I just did it and I entered it into a one minute film competition and it ended up winning honorable mention, which got me my start in actually making films for myself. Uh, I think that was in 2018, 2019, I think. Um, and then I just made it into the song this last year because I felt like it. So there was, there was no rhyme or reason. I just felt like it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not really one of those Filipinos that is like, yeah, take me to karaoke because I can sing. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I just I just like doing it occasionally. Um, and then Made to Shine, how that came about is um, 
So last year, well, I guess it doesn't have anything to do with the the Love and Karma film. So last year I did a feature film called Love and Karma. Um, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the which which had uh, Bai Ling, Joanna Pakula and Eric Roberts in it. But that's in like a whole nother mess right now. I love my cast and crew for that film, but it's in, like in messy, messy post-production right now. I love it though. I hope that it comes out and I hope people get to see it because it's a beautiful little film. Um, yeah. But Made to Shine is a six episode series that's going to be set in Las Vegas. We've already started filming it. Uh, Jojo Rivera and Alexis Aubrey and uh, uh, Kenneth Gold are my leads. Ashley is in it as well. And we have a couple surprises in there. Um, but it's about a Filipina maid that's working in the service industry. And she's a single mom to a hot headed son. And she meets a Filipino pop star who's on his like little tour here in the Las Vegas area. And they start this like little romance, you know. Um, so that is the A story is the romance between and the class issues between like this Filipina maid and this Filipino pop star, right? The secondary, like the B story is about uh, Miguel, who is her hot headed kid and the school district. Like there's certain things that are going on there. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's I'm I am excited about it because I think it's very timely, too. I love that. I can't wait to see that. Please. I I always tell everybody, I, I want you all to come back me. because we are always building out our journeys. Okay. And okay. we have different projects, as we know, as, especially all the creatives I have on. You know, let's come and celebrate those wins and let's promote those wins. So yeah. please, when that comes, I want to I want to talk you. with you again about that. I'll, I'll send you a sneak peek of one of the scenes. My leads are so cute. Like, they're so <laughs> cute. It's like, oh, they're like, they give me the killings. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, I want to talk. So we'll talk about that when it happens again. But getting to that point because of your journey, you know, as you said, you didn't go to school. So learning how to be a producer, be a writer. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, because you didn't. So I'm assuming self-taught. What was that like? And how do you overcome blocks when you hit blocks as a writer or, you know, and, and just doing that? What, what, what would you say? was your journey and then how you've overcome certain steps along that to, uh, again, other people that are watching this and they're going through that. Yeah. I would say I, I'm, I'm not necessarily self-taught. Like I'm more like YouTube taught. <laughs> you know hey, I mean? let's not knock um, that. Yeah, like, Especially for all, this generation. There's so yeah, many and, things you can learn. Yeah. And like free resource taught. And also like I tried as much as possible to, learn from you know to enroll myself in enrichment classes when i can right like so uh, self-taught is like I, I feel like no i'm not self-taught i try to learn from other people as much as i can right um but just there are so many resources in this day and age that you can tap into that don't cost anything so don't let financial situations stop you like i am a single mom which means that my finances are always tight you know like so all the time they always have been and i do want to change that in my story like i want to create a life of ease and i want to be like you know like i want to be a princess one day <laughs> like where you don't think about like i i never thought that i would say that because i i've always felt like no i'm a strong independent woman but no sometimes i just want to like rest uh, yeah right you know and like be like catered to, right? Um, and uh, admitting that to myself is actually like one of those things where it's like, how do you define yourself? Like, who are you today, right? Um, but yeah, like, how do I learn? Just take advantage of all the resources that you have on the internet because there's a lot. And, you know, it when you can, there are also like scholarships available and like uh, enrichment classes. So if you want to learn more about whatever it is, writing, acting, producing, whatever, there are resources that you can find. You just have to find them, you know? And don't, like, I got stuck in this rut of like, oh, why didn't I, when I reincarnate, incarnated into this world, like, why didn't I pick, like, a rich family to, like, do that, right? And I'm just like, that doesn't help me, like, move forward in this life that I have now. Like, there must be a reason why I chose... Like if if you do believe in reincarnation and stuff, like there must be a reason why I chose a fifteen year old unwed pregnant mom in the middle of Tondo to be born into, right? 
Maybe I like playing this world on hard. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not good at video games, but I'm pretty good at like life on hard. I don't know. Um, but yeah, use the resources that you can because there's a lot of them out there. Um, and how did I learn? I I made myself learn. Yeah. Mm. What do you want to do with your voice? So obviously made you, you have your, your 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 series that you're going to be putting out. You have these other film with these projects. What are you trying to say with your voice that you're finding still discovering because so long it's been held back and your and of your journey living on life on hard. Yeah, as you no, just said. The, I feel like like I said, like a lot of the things that I do, it's it. I want to reflect the world that I want to see. Yeah. So you know, like. I want to center Filipino women because I feel like for a long time, we're always regulated to the size or just the friend of, or, you know, whatever, you know, like, and I do as, and I, I love stories of like just women in general. And, and I just love stories in general. Like, but I think that there is a lack of stories about Filipino women that Filipino women are centered. So that's part of it. You know, that's part of the reason why I want to make films is because I do want to create jobs for that. Um, I also want to elevate just the Filipino community in general. And a lot of my stories that I find, I feel like it, it, it has to do with these two worlds, finding a center, you know, like in Love and Karma, even though I was commissioned to write that, the, the thing that drew me to that was that it was a super religious person right and a super worldly person two different classes like he was very poor and she was very rich and they kind of like find each other and they even though they have differences they have to you know work them out and find a way to connect with each other right same thing with made to shine it's very similar as like the maid is like a little bit more of the single mom poor underclass the filipino pop star is like more here and they have to find like the the way to connect with each other and also like in the b story it's like it's conservative versus liberal kind of values and they have to find a way to talk to each other mm. you know what i mean which yeah in this day and age it's like <laughs> so like difficult like we were filming mm. the other day and i could not believe it this was before the election and like my my cast and crew is primarily filipino like brown filipinos you know I what i mean not just people. like mestiza filipinos but like brown Fil you know what i mean like let's go yes yeah, yeah so we were walking down the street and like some lady like is like oh what are you guys doing and i was like oh we're making a film and then she like turned she's like you guys look like democrats are you americans do you belong here i belong here and she literally got in her blue truck and she followed us down the street and then she was harassing us down the street and i was like just in this day and age, this is still happening, you know? So, and I think one of the reasons why I was like, I do want to make stories about, you know, the people that are on the sidelines, the people that are like not of the majority culture, because when you humanize us, it makes it harder to kill us, you know? Yes. Um, And, you know, like for, I am, I am so, scared for my queer community for my undocumented community these days because the the stories that people are saying about these different communities are so like uh, covered with fear and violence yeah. right yeah like, um so i want to tell the tender stories you know, the stories where it's like, no, we're just like you. The only reason, like, my, like, I would not be here had my mom not come here undocumented. You know? Yeah. I would not be here. Like, and I don't know what my life would li be like living in Tondo. And who's to say that I'm not a good upstanding citizen or have not, you know, uh, given back to this country. You know what I mean? Like. Who is to say that? Like, you're only telling the stories about, like, the worst people, you know, or, like, people that have, like, not even the worst people, but, like, people that have, like, done really pretty violent things, right? Like, yeah. yeah, like, and that's what I want to change about the media. Like, the media needs to have more stories about brown and black people that are 
you know, um, not the violent types, you know? Exactly, Like, exactly. so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Yes. that's Girl, what I'm trying to I do. am Oh with my you. Ah. <sighs> Woo. Yes. Even I, you know, I am in deep fear, even though I was born here in the U.S. Um, but again, learning that my story changed last year, that it's some strange Filipino guy out there somewhere in the world, I don't know if still alive or not, is my real father. Uh, so that makes my birth certificate not valid anymore, even though this other person's on it. And I love him. You know, even everything I'm experiencing is difficult. I'm super scared because of just so many. You know what? I'm going off on a tangent. But it, it's even though I'm basically I'm just bringing up that even though if you've been born here like I have been, it doesn't matter because we just know that people of color are the target regardless. And it doesn't it's, it's we're living in a new world. Anyway, total sidebar tangent. I'm like I'm such an empath and I'm feeling you and I'm. crying and trying not to cry right now and i have in this but, but it's also a forum for this and so for those that are watching that we can understand and relate in that we're all in this together um so And it's thank okay you for sharing to cry. yeah and it's okay to cry and i'm fine crying Okay. <laughs> And it's actually, um you know what? What is going back to like the stories that I want to tell? I want to tell stories of women being angry. yes You know, I think that's super important. Like, yes like, I feel so. Um, Pixar actually had me help uh, Rosalie on Turning Red. So Rosalie is the one that uh, I saw played. that you were involved with that. Yeah, Yeah. 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 So I was her acting coach on that, and I think the reason why is because. When they interviewed me about that, I like my stance on on emotions and anger in general is that there are no bad emotions. Like we have to feel what we feel. Otherwise, we can't heal it. Right. And anger only points you to things that are important in your life. Right. Yes. But for so many women, especially Asian women, anger is demonized. Right. So we don't actually get to feel it. to know what is important in our life. And I think that when women tap into that rage, it can change the world. You know, like, like you think about like moms and their like mama bear energy. Like if we allow, like, oh my gosh, did you see that thing uh, in New Zealand where it was in the chamber and there was a bill that was trying Oh, to the be Maori passed? tribe, because Yeah. that one white dude was like trying to, t oh, let's go. I was so. so powerful, right? Yes. That is like, that is what we can tap into when we allow ourselves to feel the rage that's there and, and it's accepted. You know what I mean? Like that is a way that the anger can be released in a way that's like helpful. You know, it's, she wasn't being violent to anybody. You know what I mean? She was just Yeah. being not polite to the white person's eyes, but that's not really a thing, right? Like nobody was harmed by it, Yeah. you know? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I might insert that while we were talking right now. Yes. Um, I asked this of all my parents as well. And uh, again, we don't need to say child's names again, because we protect our children and we don't want all that out there. Um, but because of the life lessons that we've encountered and you definitely has had a life and lived a life, we've all lived our lives. Um, what do you think is the biggest lesson you've learned that you've, that you, if even that might be difficult and still maybe too early or too late, not late, but to teach your child now that if they see this later, you hope they take with them from your journey that we've just gone through. And from, if they see this interview later, um, that you want to impart to them that was so difficult for you to learn along the way that you've learned now and like you don't want them to make the same mistake. I would say it's actually okay to make mistakes. Yes. Uh, and to give yourself grace, you know, for whatever it is that you're going through. And I, should my child watch this at some year, well, maybe I'm not here anymore. I don't know. But I would want them to know, one, that they are loved so much, not just by the people in their life, but like by the universe, you know, and there is this, Even though I'm not a Christian, like there's this intelligence in the world that wants us to be happy, that wants us the best for us. And um, that if we get into like 
that silent place, we can still hear it, you know? That's what I would like them to, like, cultivate and learn. And also that you can choose to be happy. Like, it's happiness is a choice. It's not something outside circumstances. It's not anything like that. It's, like, something that you choose to be and go towards because we can create it in the moment. Like, just like any other, like, emotions that we have, we can learn how to create it. Um, And that if we're still here, things are going to be okay. There's a reason that we're still here. This and is then... where I cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I cry. And, <laughs> and uh, you were made to shine. And I thank you so much, uh, Giovanni, for, you know, sharing your story with me um, and this journey that you're on, that you're still building. And as made to shine comes out and your other project drops, um, I want to have you back um, whenever you're available. Uh, I consider the uh, show pal show family, everybody that I've had on are like my family now. And we're all in this together and we're building Kababaya and we're building community. Yes. And thank you for just this past hour and a little bit more uh, of your time. Um, one more nerdy question. I, I want to, okay. I feel a bit nerdy because show pal show is nerds rule the world. My, my home well site where I go into things, pop culture. Um, if you were to give us Ted talk on something that you're nerdy about and it can't be filmed because we know you're a filmmaker, you're an actor, you're an acting coach. Um, I, I want to know something that maybe, that maybe somebody doesn't know out there about you that, uh, we'll be checking this out that you could give a TED talk on because you're so nerdy about it that people I'm don't kind know. Of, I'm kind of really into aliens. Oh, aliens, real talk. I love it. Oh, yes. Did you know about the press aliens. conference that just happened like two days ago or, or was it yesterday? There's a press conference that here was here in DC that they had that talking about UAPs, you know, all of that. That's the UAP. Unidentified Air, aerial phenomena. That's search. where they're saying oh, UFOs are now. Okay, so uh, interesting. I didn't know. No, I actually, I'm very like, uh, like I like aliens. I like uh, ancient technology stuff. So like, okay. I'll like, I'll, I'll like, like the pyramid stuff. Like, how did the pyramids get made? You know, like I think it was through sound levitation. I don't know. You know, like I'm very, I'm nerdy about that stuff. Like, I, I, I'm very like into like. Wait, if you look on the Egyptian hieroglyphs, it looks like there's like a plane in the background. Wait, if you look on the Egyptian hieroglyphs, it, it looks like, or no, like the Mayan hieroglyphs, it looks like an astronaut. Oh, wait, if you look at this, it looks like a light bulb. Why don't they have smoke at the top of their things? Because they had electricity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm all I, about that. No, I love that. Yeah, that, there's really so many heard, things that I, I think. I don't know if I can give a TED talk about it, but like. I, I'm definitely like nerdy about that stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I love that. Because uh, again, I think going back to white society, European cultures, erasing history for so many things. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the roots of a lot of all of that and where we're at now. So I can get real nerdy. I'm with you on that. I get nerdy about that too. <laughs> Oh, and and something that I I do want to explore, like the whole like Filipino, uh, Filipino is like is is like the place of like gold, you know. Oh, somebody, girl, same, yes. Like, I have a lapu lapu film that I've been writing for years, well, and no, but still working out. Somebody said that the Garden of Eden was actually in the Philippines. It's an actual. It's like a. It's like a. What do you call it? It's like a a, a myth or a lore. And I'm very interested in it um, because it, it has like, I, f I forget, somebody gave me some kind of like weird, like go down the rabbit hole YouTube documentary like a while ago, but I really do want to like see, wait, is that true? Like, uh, yeah, no, I'm intrigued now. Yeah. I've never heard that Garden of Eden being in the Philippines before. Yeah, and it, it had like some kind of scientific stuff with it. I, I feel like it was, it was a while, I, I'll have to find it, but I think it's an interesting theory and I really want to look at it. And also, you know, like I'm nerdy about the stuff that like, wait, uh, the Noah's Ark is actually on a mountain in Turkey, you know? like Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been in. I'm very much into that stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, even though I don't, I don't believe in the Bible. Like I don't, I, be I don't believe in like Christianity anymore because I think God is bigger than that or whatever we call this intelligences. 
but I'm fascinated by ancient like history, you know? Giovanni, so am I. I was raised in that, you know, I wasn't part of a cult, but you know, as growing up, raised Catholic because of all of those things. And I quickly moved away from it when I saw just how Christian is really the source of most uh, I don't know. We we don't want to turn into this religious podcast. I'm signing yeah. off, but it pulled me away because to me, most hate in the world comes from religion. To be honest, at least my perspective now, and uh, having people of and friends of every you know ethnicity, sexual orientation that you know just to me religion divides. So anyway, um, I'm with you, but we're not going to go there because I know I'm probably losing viewers and followers by the minute as I speak on that. But also I don't give a fuck anyway, because I'm tr I'm all about helping people find their true self. And that's what I'm now all about. And to me, that's where love is, your yeah, true there's... selves. And I yeah. thank you, Giovanni Espiritu, for your time. Um, mahal kita salamat. I tell that to everyone. And that's also to my audience before we sign off. Um, please come back. Uh, as you continue on your journey of life, uh, I want to give you your virtual flowers. And also when I see you, the biggest hug, real Thanks. flowers, all the love. Uh, Thank salamat. you for having me on the show. Oh. Salamat din sa'yo. Mahal kita din. Thank you. There you go. Giovanni Espiritu, y'all. I'm Creepy. This is Nerds World the World Show Pal Show. Uh, check out all the links to Giovanni in the in the, in the the description below. Uh, her website, all the things. If you're in the Vegas area, as soon as uh, these things pop off, uh, we'll be talking about it. She'll be back, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, ah. I want you back, and we're just going to celebrate her. Uh, this is Show Pal Show. Mahal kisa. Salamat. Giovanni Espiritu. Creepy. Nerds World the World. Bye. There's a cut. Recording. Makata Sin. Here we go. In a one, two, three.